God bless everyone tonight or today, depending on when you're seeing this YouTube video. It is a great privilege to finally be able to record a message for the young people. I couldn't do it before because my old phone was uh, not up to par. With, it didn't have enough memory. But I bought a new phone. God has blessed me. And so uh, I know David has been asking me. And so tonight I want to share what the Lord put in my life. It touched me. You know, sometimes we say what the Lord put in my heart. But yes, before we can give anything, God has to touch us first. It has to talk to us first. And so we're going to talk about when Jesus walked on the sea. And um, we'll find that in Matthew 14, 22. And so the Word of God says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the water. And when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. When those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word has been read. We thank you for the mighty word. The word is like a double-edged sword that penetrates our lives, edifies us, lifts us up, corrects us, even rebukes us, but all out of love, my God. Father, I don't have words, but you do. Use your Holy Spirit to touch the lives that are listening to your word, especially in these days, my God. And this I ask in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Amen. Yeah, you can kiss your Father. You can kiss Jesus. You can even kiss the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's not just saying hallelujah, glory to God. It's moving and a grooving and a praising. Okay. We can talk so much about this chapter. We can talk about the faith that Peter had. We can talk about walking on the water we we'll probably mentioned that but I just want to talk about what Jesus said when they thought he was a ghost he said be of good cheer it is I do not be afraid in this scenario we see a powerful demonstration of the power of Jesus the day before he had multiplied five loaves of bread and two fish into twelve baskets full of fragments, the power of Jesus, multiplying the few into abundance. And now we see him going against what is, what is natural, what is nature. I mean, no one can walk on the water. The power of Jesus. We need to emphasize in these days the power of God. And I want to say this, and I'm sorry, but many people are not seeing the power of God work in their lives. They have forgotten the church of God cannot walk without the power of God, the power of Jesus Christ. So after he dispersed the crowd, 
he sends his disciples ahead to the other side of the lake while he stayed behind praying. It is important to note that when it came time to pray, Jesus did not let anything interfere with his communion with his Father. Prayer was a daily part of Jesus' life. It is noteworthy to see that he always went up to the mountain to pray. It is in the mountaintop where we see God's glory. Moses saw it. Peter, James, and John saw the, the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountaintop. We too must go to the mountaintop. It is the place to meet God alone in prayer. I just want to pause here. Why is it that we don't see God's glory? Why is it that we don't, we're not a witness of Jesus, his power? Because a lot of us lack prayer in our lives. You would be surprised how many Christians do not have a disciplined life of prayer. The first thing that prayer is going to do, or one of the many things that prayer is going to do, is to transform your life. You will see how your life changes by the power of the Holy Spirit when you have a disciplined prayer life. If you don't pray, you don't worship God. If you don't pray, you don't praise God. I don't care how many songs you sing in church. If there is no prayer life, your words go down to the floor. Melod that melody that comes out of your mouth does not reach heaven. Ooh, wow. Oh yeah, can you prove that to me, Brother Sanchez? Yes, I can. For this people worship me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. Prayer life is important. You're not going to heaven by singing songs or even working in the church. Jesus Christ is the path to heaven, but you must have a communion with the Father. That is why Jesus is your in-between man. Man, Jesus the Father. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Our mountaintop is your place where you have designated to be alone with God in prayer. You have to set up a time. You have to set up a place to have a relationship with God. In the life of Jesus, that was very important to talk to his Father. He was always praying. He was always calling out there. Even if the prayer was like for like 10 seconds or two minutes. But most of the time he would spend the whole night praying. Prayer is an important part of the life of a Christian. If you don't pray, you are missing out on a lot of things, on a lot of blessings. I just wanted to touch on that. As he was praying, the disciples were in the midst of a storm. Verse 24 says, But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. This is where Jesus meets them by walking on the water. The book of Mark says he almost passed them. Now when the disciples, they saw him, they think he's a ghost. But Jesus lets them know that it's him, and he says these words. Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And this is where I want to make an emphasis. Jesus tells his disciples and tells us to be of good cheer. Cheer in the middle of a storm or the unknown they thought he was a ghost. What exactly did Jesus mean by saying, be of good cheer? You know, in these days, where well, the world is going through a great confusion, turmoil, I mean, so many things are happening. And in the middle of everything that's happening, you have the pandemic, coronavirus, 
COVID-19, whatever, the China virus, whatever you want to call it. So many people have died. So many people have been inf infected and affected. Maybe many of you have gotten sick and you've recovered your family members. Just a couple of weeks ago, a cousin of mine died because of COVID-19. And we were praying for her. She was a Christian. But the Lord decided to use this to take her with her, to take her with him. And so it is sad, humanly speaking, but she's rejoicing in heaven. So Jesus tells us to be in good cheer in the middle of a storm, in the middle of uncertainty, in the middle of the unknown. He tells us, be of good cheer. So what, what do you mean by cheer? So Well, cheer can be defined in many words like courage, encouragement, comfort or support, praise or joy, confidence. It is a state of mind or heart. And I think this is what Jesus is trying to say. You have to be of good cheer. You have to encourage yourself. I remember Pastor David preached, and I looked it up, where David was confronted with a, a situation in his life. Well, he was going to get killed by his own men, and he says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. In the middle of a storm where the boat is being rocked back and forth, with mighty gushing winds blowing and the unknown, we hear Jesus saying, be of good cheer. Are you kidding me? No. This is exactly what he is saying. He's not asking us. He's commanding us. He's giving you an order to be of good cheer, to have courage, to be encouraged, to show valor, to be confident, to the point of being joyful and happy. Wow! Yeah, I've seen people sad in these days, but I've also seen them laugh and, and be lifted up by the Word of God. You know, when this, we're going to go off a little bit now. When this pandemic hit us, it hit me. I was quarantined and sick in bed for about, about a week and a half, two weeks. I was out of work three weeks. The third week was the roughest, but it wasn't the coronavirus. I think by a week and a half, I think the virus had subsided in me, the fever had gone away. What really hit me was anxiety. I mean, I felt my heart was gonna blow up. My mind was in confusion. And yet, I'm able to rejoice in the Lord because he lifted me up. It wasn't that I lost faith, but my faith was shaken. And it's good sometimes when your faith is shaken. Because I said a long time ago, it's easy to preach about faith when everything is going all right. And I'm going to be honest with you. There came a time before the pandemic that I thought, Lord, you know, I, I haven't gone through a trial or a tribulation in a long time. You better be careful what you ask for. Because they're always saying that Christians always have to go through a period of test, testing. It seemed my life was, oh, everything is beautiful. Until that hit me. And, and like someone said on TV, the, mo the monster would come out at night. Oh, yes it did. That monster came out at night. And there were a lot of sleepless nights. But in those nights that I lost sleep, I would call on to God. I had to be of good cheer. I had to encourage myself. I had to show valor. I, me, I had to show faith. I had to be confident. And though I was feeling the way I was feeling, I did not stop 
praising God. And I'm even going to say this. That was the grace of God over me. And if I didn't pray, I would listen to preachings all night long. I wouldn't sleep. But finally, the Lord spoke to me and lifted me up. Be of good cheer. Wow. He said a word after that. He says, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. If you're going to fear anything, fear the Lord. And that means have respect and reverence towards God. Let me tell you something. Coronavirus is under his feet. God can go like that and squish it in a moment and it's gone. Oh, but Brother Sanchez, why is it permitted? The consequences of sin come in many ways. Look at this world. It's turned its back totally, totally. It has, it has, it wants nothing to do with God. And when you give your back to God, you embrace Satan. I don't care what anybody says or believes. When you embrace sin, Satan enters into the picture. And Satan and sin will not bring anything good. He says, do not fear. But in between those words, he says the most important statement or declaration. It is I. He says, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. This is where I want to pause. You see, Jesus is the reason why we can be of good cheer. I want you to understand this now. Now this is where, this is where the, the word gets, hits you now. He is the reason why you can be in good cheer. Jesus is the center of all confidence. He's the center of all encouragement. He is the center of all happiness. What was he trying to say to his followers when he said, It is I. So now I'm not reading no more. When he tells you be of good cheer, there's a reason. You know why? Because he's there. When he tells you not to fear, you know why? Because he's there. Wow, the Bible is full of that. He tells Joshua, listen, have I not commanded you? Be not afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Don't give up. Because wherever you go, I will be there. He's commanding you to have confidence, to not be afraid, to be full of joy, because that's the fruit of the Spirit, joy. Let the love of God flood your life, because perfect love casts away all fear. Don't be afraid of the unknown. Realize that God knows beyond the unknown. I have determined to put my life in the hands of God because He knows what's best for me. He protects me. He's with me. Yes, I have an instinct of survival. Everyone does. But I also have faith in the living God. He is the center of my joy. Because He is there, that is why I'm encouraged. Because He is with me, that is why I don't fear. Wow. When the widow of Nain was going to bury her only son, Jesus saw as they were going to bury her, her son and had compassion over her and stopped the people and the woman was crying. He says, don't cry. And immediately he raised up his son, her son. You know, you got to read in between. the When he says, don't cry, I'm here. I am here. We need to understand that it is only through Jesus that we can encourage ourselves. This is not a philosophy, mental power, or yoga, or meditation, or whatever the world wants to. None of that works. The 
It is my faith in Jesus that helps me walk on the water. Turbulent water. The wind is blowing. The boat is rocking back and forth. The winds are hitting the boat. And yet I'm able to walk on the water as long as I look to him. So this message is not long. And I know that many of you have gone through situations that are not normal right now that could be the normal for a long time. The wearing of the mask, the social distancing, the quarantine. Many of you are not sure if you're going back to the classrooms or you're going back into the computer for school. But let me tell you something. Let Jesus Christ be the center of your cheer, of your joy, of your encouragement. Get into the Word of God and let the Word of God speak to you. This is not a book with just black letters so that you can read and recite and remember and not really uh, grasp on to the message that is trying to give you. God spoke to me and said, Julio, be of good cheer. You can encourage yourself because I am with you. I am the center. I am the beginning and the end. I am the power above all power. Who else can walk on the water? Well, you know something? Not only Jesus, you can. You can walk on top of your problems. You can walk on top of your sadness. You can walk on top of your anxiety. You can walk on top of everything that comes against you. David said, you come against me with a spear and a sword, but I come against you, Goliath, in the name of the Lord of the hosts. He has now given me your head in my hand. Hasn't been easy. But it's getting better. Many of us are starting to go to work. Many of us are, lift, are being lifted up by encouragement of the word. Many of us who our faith was shaken is now walking a little stronger on the water. The water is still rocking, but we're walking. Why? Because we have decided to put our sight, our eyes on Jesus Christ. And I, like I said before, we can just dissect this chapter in so many ways. We can talk about the faith of Peter. We can talk about when he sank. We can talk. I just want to tell you what the Lord spoke to me. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Don't be afraid. Jesus. It's not even on the boat now. He's walking on the water. He'll calm your storms. He'll bring peace. He'll flood you with his love. If anyone ever doubted that Jesus does not love you, you're wrong. I'm here to tell you, you are absolutely wrong. You don't even know how much he loves you. You don't even know how much the Father cares for you. You don't even know how much the Holy Ghost has protected you. You don't even know how many angels are around you. Oh yes, because they're the messengers of God that God sends to protect his children. But here's the thing. If you do not have a relationship with God, then fear will grip your heart and you won't know who to come to. When we spoke about Jesus praying on the mountain, you need to develop a disciplined prayer life. And I don't want to hear the excuse, I don't know how to pray. I think at this moment, at this time, at this stage, many of you have an idea of what to pray what to say I mean come on we break it down to basics worship God for a while praise God for a while give him thanks ask for forgiveness pray for your family pray for your friends pray for the world pray for those who are sick I got so much to pray for it's just a conversation the way I'm talking to you through YouTube talk to God Lord help me Lord look at my weakness Lord but I trust in you and mix the prayer with the word. If you don't get into the word, you won't even know what to pray. This is my advice. Get 
to know Jesus Christ. Many of you are going to be baptized soon. That's a wonderful experience. But many people are baptized and still don't have Jesus. It's more important that you have Jesus than to get baptized. I'm not saying not to get baptized. Understand what you're going to do. Baptism is to show the world that you have decided to follow Jesus. If your prayer life is nowhere, please start today. God bless you. God keep you safe. Amen.